and this carrot, there's this lovely green bit that grows above the ground that we don't eat. It is edible, but we often don't eat it. So this is above the ground. What makes us human, I think, is food. It's important for, for all things in a culture to share food around a table, not only feeds us and sustains our body, but sustains our souls as well. It, 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 it makes us human. Again, I'm gonna mash my berries. How are they looking? Oh. Because we all have that, we all have that one experience in common. Kids come to you from so many different places and they're all at so many levels. And food is one thing that unites us all. We all love to eat. Fruit and yogurt parfait. And we've got pictures here on how we're going to move my hand into the middle. Cheers. Now check. I think there's something really, really powerful in cooking with people, sharing food with people, and just giving kids that knowledge about food and about what they can do and about the fact that they can they can make things that are good to eat and that are healthy for them and that, that, that that's information that will alter who they become as adults I think. Project Chef is a program where you learn some cooking skills and I love Project Chef because I have a passion for cooking. In a recipe, you need to look up at the ingredient list to know what you're going to be cooking with, the ingredient. Then you need to look down at the method to know what to do with it, how to do something with it. So bouncing back and forth when you read a recipe, a different type of reading. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're going to use all kinds of cool things. Oh, yeah. Like an oven? Yes, Amy. <laughs> I can oven this week. With the apron strings, I wanted Project they go Chef to celebrate that. food in many ways and make it experiential way of looking at food. It's more than cooking, it's looking at food through cooking because it's very hands-on, but you're looking at what food is and its importance in, in society, its importance in, in education, its importance in a family. That's sort of what started Project Chef. If I can, I want to choose ingredients that grow as close to home as possible. Why? Why would I choose something closer to home if I can? It's fresher. So if it's fresher, it's tastier, it's got more nutrition, but also when it's traveling here by boat or plane or truck or whatever, a lot of emissions are going into the air with a lot of gas being used. So if I'm buying something from closer to home, I'm helping the environment as well and helping a local farmer, which is really nice too. We set up in a classroom seven kitchen stations. Over the course of the week, we teach children how to make breakfast, lunches, dinners, and snacks from scratch, from start to finish, engaged in small groups, cooking, preparing, cleaning, eating, cleaning up again and composting, that whole process of cooking. And in Canada's Food Guide, we talk about having a balanced meal. We know the four different food groups. We've got our Project Chef was just so straightforward and so friendly and, and they came in and they had a positive attitude and they held vegetables up and they held instruments up and, and allowed the kids to experience things that they never had before. And they were excited, they were excited to learn about the food and the healthy living and to try things that they hadn't done before. Every shape of pasta has a different name which is kind of cool. It's its whole language all to itself. So we're using pasta today. And pasta is made from wheat, oftentimes, except this one is made from corn. You can also get pasta made from spelt. You can get pasta made from rice. You can get pasta made from a number of different things because it's all made from grains. We've looked at, vi we've looked at veggies and fruits, Today we're going to have a quick look at greens before we start. We begin the lesson with um, a demonstration of what we're creating that day for a menu. Um, and woven through that lesson is not only the skills we're learning, but woven through that we're looking at um, what's green. We talk about needing to eat six green servings of greens a day. Well, what on earth is a green? and minerals. It has a lot of fiber in it. So the bran is an important part of the green. This down here, so we examine what greens are. So you're looking at what greens are. We're looking at greens from around the world. You're looking at 
at um, all these different um, cultural grains. We're looking at what a grain is. We're looking at water boiling. We're looking at safety in the kitchen. We're looking at how to cut properly. We're looking at uh, working as a team. Someone's going to be doing this and someone's going to be doing that. All of these things are, are put together in a lesson and demonstration. Show me a simmer. Let me see the simmer. A little bit of movement. Show me a boil. Show me a simmer. But the whole time she weaves all of this information through everything that she does so that they're learning about local and organic foods and they're learning about the politics of food and the history of foods and she does it all so effortless, effortlessly that they don't even realize, I don't think, but they remember everything. They remember everything that she says. The problem is these pesticides, these are chemicals they spray on fruits and vegetables and they do stop pests from bothering fruits and vegetables, but now that pesticide is on that fruit and vegetable, right? So you want to wash that fruit and vegetable just to make sure any pesticides are not on that um, before you ingest that. That's important. A lot of it allowed us to explore week, topics that doing it in a set on its own, we might not have had the interest from the kids, but doing it through food they were right there with us the whole time and they were you know pushing us to take these explorations further and they were the ones who were coming in and asking more questions and wondering oh can we you know can we think about the foods in India or what's going on in China do they have gen genetically modified foods and they just kept on pushing it further and further and wanted to know more and more and I think if we hadn't had that starting point of food something that they have this great experience and they wouldn't have been pushing themselves to go out and learn more. So we are adding canned tomatoes today. Yesterday we added fresh tomatoes. Canned vegetables can give you good nutrition as well. It's a le little less nutrition than fresh, but canned, frozen, these vegetables we can use also for nutrition if we can't get fresh they're a good substitute and these are organic peeled tomatoes hmm what's in them remember i'm going to take this off for a second remember that package of soup we looked at yesterday yeah. do you remember all the stuff in there yeah. everything has to be labeled so i'm going to list for you what's in this can ingredients organic tomatoes good Organic tomato juice. Good. Good. Organic basil leaf. Good. Yeah. That's it. That's all that's in that. Not any salt. Nothing else but the real deal. So that's it. I know what I'm putting in. How do I add this? The same way you added other things. Hang on. Good grip. Aim for the middle. Low down end. Tip. And there was always this incredible focus from the kids. Every kid just completely focused on her lesson. And then when she was done, things had been so clearly laid out and so clearly explained that when it was time for them to get to work, everybody knew exactly what they were doing. And they just went off and did it. And it was almost like all of the adults could fade away and these kids would be doing exactly what they needed to be doing. And they worked as a team and they cooperated and they got along and it didn't matter who they were working with but they were this great little, I mean it was like they were running a kitchen. Beautiful. Okay, okay, yummy. It's not even all about the food, it's about the teamwork and about just getting together with your friends and making food and how even if you don't like something that's on the menu, you'll still have a lot of fun because you learn about food and you get to work together as a team and they're not stopping you every second saying, oh no, don't do that, don't do that. They let you learn by yourselves. Okay. Let's see. Yes, you have a turn. You have to Two tablespoons of berries on top. Two tablespoons. Okay. Two tablespoons. Two tablespoons. Okay. Berries. To, to open a door, to allow them to create, you know, make decisions, make it beautiful, make it, make it taste delicious. We talk about being a chef is, is part scientist, part hard worker, and part artist, because you bring something of yourself to, 
to what you're making. You're creating a dish that's not only delicious to eat, but beautiful to look at. So being a um, creativity in part of cooking and, and, and part of food is enormously important, enormously important. And allowing time for that creative aspect to happen. Not having everything so set in stone that it needs to be perfectly duplicated. You want to give a recipe which is really a, um, guidelines. It was, it was very exciting because that's the way we all cook at home, right? And so to tell the kids that there is a certain amount of measuring that you've got to do, but some of it, well, you just go to taste, right? So it was very creative and they had fun with it. You could taste it now. You could tear that one. Now, instead of just following the recipe, I like adding different kinds of things to it, like adding a little bit more of something and not using the measuring, but just thinking of what it, how much it would be, and I like making up recipes now more. It's a chance for kids that maybe learn differently or express their knowledge differently through real through real action, through real hands-on learning, it gives them the chance to be the superstars, to really shine. But it's, it's a chance for everybody to shine because they, they can all, they all plug in wherever they are, at what level they're at, and they can be successful. And I think that it's just done in a way to ensure that every single person that participates will be successful. The kids found out that they were capable of doing things that maybe they thought they hadn't been capable in the past or that other people thought they hadn't been capable of doing and they just felt really proud of their accomplishments and you could see that all over their faces and the way that even once we were done our cooking program they continued to come in and tell us about the things that they did at home or some kids would get together on the weekends and bake together and once their parents saw that they really did have the skills to do these things, they let them go for it. And it was really great life skill for them to learn and to then use in their own lives and with their family. So a great confidence builder, definitely. It's a really good program because you learn about healthy foods, you learn about how the ingredients work together and how nutritious they are. It's really nice because it's just very warm and the food is very good too and it's, it's just very nice. If you can cook, you can make everybody happy. It's life learning. It's, it's learning that will really make a difference to, to who they are now, who they'll be as adults. It teaches them to be really knowledgeable about what they're eating and to make, to make choices that they wouldn't necessarily be able to make otherwise. And it opens their eyes to, I think, information and thinking that they don't even, that they wouldn't come across otherwise. Okay, then you decide you're the chef. The best part is about, is the cooking, and then after you eat it, and this, a lot of them taste really good. So we've got soup coming out our yin yang, but they they've done it all. Yeah. Very exciting. Yeah. Okay. And choose it all righty, perfect. When you tasted all the like, ingredients together, um, it tasted um, like you're in heaven.